In this video, we're gonna be building a load-bearing wall so that we can rip that one out. And we're gonna do it right now. So let me try and explain what's going on here. You walk down this hallway and you have the bathroom, a bedroom, and a bedroom. And you have this wall right here. And as you come over here, it's just an open room. So my plan is to make this a bedroom. You can see that's where the living room is. I closed it off and we're gonna put a bedroom in here with a closet. We're just gonna build a wall right here with a doorway so we can have a door. But back here, we have this wall that needs to come out. And I actually have a feeling that this wall used to be where I'm planning on building this wall right about here, because that is where the main supporting beam is in the basement. And since they built this wall, not over the beam, but in the middle of this joist run, these joists are sagging down. It's putting a lot of strain on those. So typically when you're building a load bearing wall, you want it supported all the way down to the foundation, like this one's gonna be. Let's take a look in the basement. Now down in the basement, you can see the main beam. And this right here is just about where that wall is, right in the middle of this joist run, as I said. They sit up there on top of the foundation, and then they run to this center beam. So all that weight is pushing down on these. I know you're not gonna be able to see it, but it is sagging a little bit. And once I build that wall on top of that beam, the weight's gonna come off of the center of these joists from that wall. And these joists are likely going to lose some of that bow. And that's fine. I'm just worried about one thing. The only thing I'm worried about is this tile right here. So when I did the bathroom, I bumped this up a little bit. I didn't know that I was gonna be taking this wall out. So I made this floor level. So if over here, this comes back up, when I take the weight off of this, the only fear that I have is that I might be cracking some grout or even some tile, but I think there's gonna be weight on here to keep it kind of where it was. And this has been sitting for so long that I have a feeling it's not gonna move that much, but we'll see. Worst case scenario, I know how to fix that. Don't want to, but I know how to. And back downstairs, you can see I did put a joist in here uh, to carry the weight because this was cut out completely because of the old toilet being there long ago. This was like this when I moved in. That goes up through that wall. So that's gonna have to be taken out of there finally, which would be good. But I supported this over to here. I took some of the strain off of that floor. And in hindsight, maybe I should have done the same thing with these when I did the bathroom, but hindsight's 2020, right? I didn't really know I was going to be doing this, and this house is so old that nothing is level, nothing is straight. Uh, so I do what I can with what I have, and the first thing I want to do here is support this beam over here. I know it's already supported like this, but you can see it has sank. You can see a little better on this side. It has sank a little bit. And I don't know, there's something about these blocks that I just don't like. So I'm gonna take a two by eight and run it from here down to here. I'll probably double it up on top of here and then put one more all the way down to the floor there. And I am not planning on raising this up because of the fact that this is an old house. This floor is telling me that this beam actually has to go down and then this floor is telling me that it actually has to go up. So this is called splitting the difference. We're leaving it right where it is and just trying to stop it from dropping any further. So the short version of all of that is I'm gonna put a third bedroom in my house. So I'm gonna build a wall with a doorway. While I do that, I'm gonna take the weight off of the old wall, push those joists up, take the weight off the floor, and hope that I don't crack any tile. Let's do it. Let's clean this up. Nail out. 
staple. Make sure I'm clear here. And typically what you would do is put a bottom plate or a base plate down here. All I'm gonna do, this is a just in case kind of thing. So that should be my new slogan, just in case. This, like I said, this is already supported right here. I just wanna add a little something to this. So I'm not worried about this moving at all. Uh, if you wanted to, you do a base plate, but I am just gonna run a two by eight right from here down to here to 20 inches. Right on the bottom here, I have a couple spots that are sticking up a little bit. Just chip this up. It should sit there nice and flat. Check that with my little torpedo level. Now I'm gonna put a couple three and a half inch exterior screws they're coated and they're made for structural purposes. I'm gonna throw those into those blocks. Like I said, this isn't gonna go anywhere, but throw these in just to hold it. Hey, just in case. I'm gonna clean this out down here where this two by eight is gonna sit. Make sure it's sitting right on the concrete. Looks good. Moving on. I'm gonna take a two by four and throw it in here. I cut it a little short. I just wanna see what this looks like so I know what to cut this piece at. So I'm tight on the bottom and I wanna hold this so it's plumb. About two and an eighth. So now I know the thickness of the pieces I wanna put in here and that will make this support from here all the way to the floor nice and plumb. Luckily I had this piece laying around, which is about five eighths and that with inch and a half gets me as close to two and an eighth as I can without ripping something. I'm good with that. By the way, the reason I use pressure treated is because anytime you put wood up against concrete, you want it to be treated. And these are both kind of filler pieces. The real support is gonna be here and the one all the way to the floor. So yeah, that is not going anywhere. Support it all the way down to the floor, support it on top of here. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this area, like how to finish it. I am thinking I am gonna put studs like this, plumb. See how there's a gap here and it's tight down there. I'll probably be, be doing studs against this wall and closing it in somehow. But the good thing about it so if I want to change it, I used screws so I can take it out if I wanted to. But now we know that our foundation is solid. We're supported right down to the ground. I always work from the bottom up. So now we can go back upstairs. Something that's worth noting, when you have a load-bearing wall, we'll take this, this wall as the load-bearing wall. What you have is you have a support that holds up the ceiling joist or the floor joist. And typically you take your joist, you sit it on an outside wall, or in this case, there's a beam in the bathroom that it's attached to, and it would come over to here and be broken, which means the joist would be cut. And then you take another joist and it sits here and goes all the way over to the outside wall. So if that was the case, and I took this wall out, if that, you know, did my plan here, built this wall. Well, these joists typically would be broken right here. So I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to put a beam in right here. And at that point, you might as well just have this wide open, unless you were building a wall for a bedroom, say. Um, but in my case, these ceiling joists actually span 20 feet all the way from that outside wall to the beam in the bathroom. And they're two by six and they're 24 inches on center. 
means 24 inches apart. So two by six, 24 inches apart going 20 feet is definitely undersized. And I can't just rip this wall out just because the joists go all the way 20 feet. That ceiling would sag and worst case scenario, it could collapse. So I do need a wall here, but that's something to note. Usually when you have an existing load bearing wall, the joists are broken on top of it. So if you took that wall out, those joists would not be supported by anything. And just to make sure my memory serves me correctly, we're gonna make sure that these joists go all the way. I'm just gonna take off a couple floorboards to confirm. I already have this one gone and there's some gone over there. So there's the room. These are the two joists, really, that we're gonna be picking up with that wall to start anyways. So I've exposed those. <clears throat> if you look over here, that wall is this right here. The existing wall is right here. Two by three wall that those joists sit on. So like I said, typically there would be a break there. You'd have one, usually they overlap and they're nailed together. But if you look down, there's no break. They go over to a beam, which you can kind of see over there. So they're connected to that beam. Then they run this way. No breaks there. That new wall is gonna be about right here. Well, obviously there's no breaks down here or we'd have some sagging and then down here looks good so it is confirmed that the joists are not broken there they go all the way across i'm gonna have to open the ceiling up down there so before i do that i'm gonna do myself a favor and clean this out so i don't have or minimize the amount of crap falling on me so all this insulation will eventually be replaced. Just gonna tuck it out of the way. Don't tell my wife I'm using the good vacuum. I just don't feel like lugging the shop vac up here right now. It just works so good. Okay, let's make way for the new wall. What I'm gonna do is take a row of tiles off here, this one right here, all the way, because that's where my top plate's gonna be. I'll remove this trim, take off the paneling down to here, take the carpet up, and take this off so I can see where that framing is so I can match it up with the new wall. And if you're wondering about this, this is the last circuit left over from the bathroom remodel. This kind of stuff happens all the time when you have a fixer upper. So this is a new line run down to the panel. Uh, this was originally tied into the bathroom. So I disconnected it from that, ran a new line to the bathroom, and I'm gonna use this one to power this room because I knew I was going to do something with this room. I didn't know it was going to be a bedroom. I was going to finish it at some point. So stuff like this happens when you own a fixer upper. So don't worry about it. Because in my mind, stuff like this and stuff like that would be a waste of time to fix when you know that you're going to be redoing a room anyways. So why would I nail this trim when I know the paneling's coming off? And why would I fix a hole when I can just hang a painting? Now, what tool do you think I'm going to use on this to cut it? Well, of course, the oscillating tool, my favorite tool in the world. <laughs> the reason I like using this tool so much, first of all, I don't like making a huge mess when I'm doing demo. I'm not refinishing this room completely right now. I'm just putting this wall up and doing some other things afterwards. So I'm going to cut this very carefully and try not to make a mess. And the oscillating tool helps out a lot with that. 
if I was to use a Sawzall or something else, sawdust everywhere. This just goes back and forth, makes less dust. <laughs> downside to this tool is these blades are pretty expensive so be careful try not to hit any nails or anything there you go I've gotten a lot of questions because these tiles and this glue are or were all throughout this house including the bathroom remodel the living room the bedroom and a lot of people ask does this contain asbestos? Actually, they say, is this asbestos? And that wouldn't be proper because this wouldn't just be asbestos. It would contain asbestos or it could contain asbestos. Luckily, I got the tile tested and this glue and this is 95% cellulose and this is 100% other, not asbestos. It's always a good thing to test before you do any kind of remodel. But since you asked, there you go. There's a little trick for you to remove sections of paneling if you don't want to remove the entire thing. You take this groove right here, take a nice sharp utility knife, and slice along that a couple times. One, two, three. Yeah, I went right through that time, so I'm going to do two. One. Two. Okay, and then just take this and pull it. Sweet! Little tip. Settle down. There's a dog outside. You might want to back up. Yes, I know. I'm wearing a mask. Look out, buddy. I got this opened up. I'm gonna keep opening this wall up a little bit, very carefully. I don't like the way that it looks, so I'm not gonna go too crazy right now uh, if I don't have to. So I don't know how this is framed. I wouldn't be surprised if the paneling is helping hold this up a little bit. Uh, you can see all this right here. No idea what's going on with that. I just wanna open this up a little bit, investigate that a little more because I'd like to support that area right there while I do this.
All right, I took some more of this wall apart. And this actually is a stud on the flat. This drywall is the closet drywall. And up here, this top plate is the closet top plate, the back wall of the closet right here. And I think what happened was this was a load bearing wall like it should have been. And then they cut it up, did their mirror shelf thing here. They had a picture in here. Actually, it's down here. I'll show you that later. And they ended up putting the weight of this on, first of all, this wall. But also, this is like, that's where that void is. Now there's weight right here. See, it's like a cubby. There's weight here and over here and it's coming down onto here. And the problem with that is that obviously this isn't great. So they just cut these joists. The break over the beam is right there and it might be hard to tell, but that is sagging. So the weight of the wall and of the ceiling is pushing down on this. So I'm gonna put that weight back where it should be. Now in a perfect world, what I should do with this wall is put a string line right here and bring it down so it's nice and even with the wall and start this wall right here, bring it this way and attach it there. But the problem is, look where it lands. So that is the outside of the wall and my plate is gonna be three and a half inches and then I'm gonna have four inches for drywall. And you look where the trim is, where this door is, that's gonna be a problem. It's gonna, I, I don't wanna cut the trim like that. I, I hate that. Sorry, I strongly dislike that. So instead what I'm gonna do is start the framing up tight against this. I'm actually gonna put an eight foot two by four all along this frame and make it straight that way. And then do the same up here, you know, wherever plum is and go all the way over to there. Uh, but right here, it'll be useful because I'm going to have the closet be right here. I'm gonna extend this closet this way a little bit, get a closet here and a closet on the other side, a hallway closet. That's part of the bigger picture. So right now I just wanna build this, frame the doorway, get the weight off of that wall and see if I can take that wall out. That's the big plan. I know there's a lot of explanation, but there's kind of a lot of thinking that goes into it. For me anyways, <laughs> my head is uh, spinning a little bit. So let's make sure this is gonna work. I already have a drill bit and drilled right here. I'm gonna take my tape measure and measure to this. And from the bit to the edge of this wall where I want the new wall to start is an inch and a quarter. So let's go in the basement. My drill bit is right here. And I just want to make sure that the new wall is gonna sit on this beam. So I said an inch and a quarter plus three and a half inches. That's four and three quarters. So when I put my tape like this, you can see all of that wall is going to sit on this beam. Reveal this amazing floor. That's nice. I might leave that. Bottom plate is set exactly where I want it. You're gonna notice that there's a gap here between that wall and the gap gets smaller as you go down there. And the reason is 
that wall is not straight. Neither is anything in this house. So this is another case of splitting the difference. I measured from here, the end of the wall over to the outside wall. And then same thing here, snuck my tape in there. Ideally, you want that to be the same exact measurement. But if your house is really old like mine, you kind of got to make the best decision you can with what you have. So I'm going, like I said, splitting the difference, going in between that. Uh, things aren't going to be completely square in this room or out there. You can even see my bathroom. You see the tiles. That one's about six inches. And then this one's about eight inches. So from there to here and over there to here is not going to be perfect either, but that's an old house for you. <laughs> so let's get this into place. And right here, the trim is gonna come out, the trim that I have to about right there. And then the drywall will give me about that much of a gap. So that'll be drywall. This right here will be trim, drywall, drywall. So we're good there. So before I even attach this, I'm gonna mark out where my studs and where my framing is going to be. I'm going to put a door starting right here, as tight this way as I possibly can. But same thing, I don't want to have a problem with the trim. So what I'm going to do is do a stud right here. This is an inch and a half, the thickness of a two by four. Mark that here. And then we're going to do another stud right here. That's going to be what's known as my king stud. For my, for my doorway. And then another one right here. That's gonna be my jack stud. That goes under the header. The trim will be right here. It'll be enough to get away from this wall. Enough for my trim. And then for my door, I'm gonna put a 32 inch door in here and what I like to do is go two and a half inches bigger than the door size for the rough opening. So I measure off of this jack mark. So 32 plus two and a half, 34 and a half is gonna be my rough opening. Then you do the same thing on this side. This is gonna be my jack stud. And then this is gonna be my king stud, J for Jack. And then as far as the stud layout, I'm gonna hold my tape like this and you wanna go every 16 inches. That's the red marks on here. But good practice is subtracting three quarters. So 47 and a quarter instead of 48. And the reason for that is because when you have drywall, when you put drywall on, it will land half on the stud. Let's pretend this is an eight foot piece of drywall at four feet. If you actually put your stud right here, then your drywall wouldn't have anything to nail to. So you wanna subtract three quarters, very easy. Every time you see this red mark on your tape, you just go three quarters back, 31 and a quarter, 47 and a quarter, 63 and a quarter, and frame the wall that way. Once that mark is there, you can measure like this, 16 inches and make your mark over here. Make sense? The reason I'm marking this out before is because I wanna nail this in, but I don't wanna nail this right here because I'll be cutting this out. So I can nail up to this line and up to this line. Now I cut a two by four, the straightest one I could find so that it will fit up here. And then I take my four foot level and I'm gonna use this two by four as a level find out where plum is 
and that way I can attach my top plate. So it turns out that plum is right there. Perfect. So I'm gonna leave that piece of strap in there. It's about three inches, which should be plenty for this to sit on. So it's even right there. If you're doing this and you wanna take it out, you could do that. Um, I'm not gonna have a problem. I'll just attach it here. And then on the other side, I'll put strap in. And then on this side, I'll put strapping for the drywall afterwards. And then over here, that's my mark for plum on this side. I'm gonna put my top plates up, eight footers, leave them long. I'm gonna end up, you always wanna cut these where a stud is gonna be half on, just like this. That's how it worked out with taking three quarters away from your 16 inches. And I'm just leaving these long. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do down this way. I'm likely not gonna have studs right here. There'll be kings and jacks holding up a header for my closet. But for now, I'm just gonna throw them in and I can take care of it later. double top plate. Again, try and get boards that are nice and straight, if you can. So here's what I got going on. I have two bottle jacks and I cut studs like this, screwed them together, screwed them together so I can take them apart easily afterwards. This adds more support I have one there, I have one up there, and I didn't want to put this one on the plate because I want to leave room. That's where I'm building the doorway, so this would get in my way. Otherwise, I'm in between studs over here. Another thing I did is I added some screws loosely. This is if I'm down here using the jack and one of them gets loose because I raised this up, it doesn't fall on my head. So there's a little tip for you, because that's never fun. So now that this is supported, I'm gonna take this paneling off and drywall, whatever, expose the framing, because I wanna see that move. I wanna see the weight come off of it before I build this wall into place. And I'm not going to use levels, because again, this is an old house. So I just want to get the weight off of that and put this wall in. But before I do that, I know you're like, just build the damn wall. I want you to get the full experience though. So down here, what I've done is I've added these strings and this is pretty much exactly where the existing wall is, maybe a little this way. Uh, and what I wanna see is if that floor goes up. So I got these strings. They're just barely touching the floor. That one's a little higher. So if that floor goes up, we'll be able to see that it did. I'm sure we'll be able to see if it goes up a lot from upstairs, but that is going to be an indication. And this pipe is pretty heavy. This is tight, so I'm not sure if this one's gonna go up much because of all the weight that's on it because of this, but we'll see. Okay, we got the wall opened up. Nothing too suspicious here. Uh, it already feels like there's not much weight on this wall. In fact, there's a gap right there. It's kind of gaps all over the place. Let's see what happens. This is where you start to hear all kinds of funny things. Some cracking, some popping.
Ooh. see what I mean? That loosened up when I raised this one up. And then we go over and feel if that did anything. It wasn't a lot. Can't really tell. Go up some more. Let's see if we feel any different here. Actually, we do. Feels more loose. Put a little more. Oh yeah. There's a lot of weight on this one. Not as much on this one. I think that's pretty loose. I am gonna frame this door in, put whatever studs in I can, and then I'm gonna move the jack over here. You can see this is kind of sinking this way. So I wanna get that tight, but I only have two jacks. So I'm gonna build this doorway. So there's two studs over here, the double king stud, two at 90 and 5 eighths. Put this stud in, made it tight. Just gonna line it up with my mark on the bottom. Then I can grab my level, make sure I'm good at the top. And I just do what's called toe nailing. Make sure it's straight. The gun is not a hammer. Guys, remember. Some of the weights off of that one. Still a bunch on that one. Oh, there we go. Cool. So I'm gonna put a two by six header in here with a plywood, piece of half inch plywood sandwiched. That'll give me my three and a half inches. The two by six is five and a half inches. And then I'm gonna add a two by four, so that's an inch and a half. And then down to my opening, I have about four and a half inches there. On this side, I have about four and three quarters. So I'm gonna make them all four and a half, split the difference. And these are called cripples. I don't know why you call them cripples, but they go every 16 inches. Same as everything else. So if I hook on here, remember, minus three quarters, so 15 and a quarter. And then from there, you can go 16 inches. That's good for those. So I need four of them. One here, 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 and here. I'm gonna start by putting these two in. Ah! thing about the small blocks. I Maybe mean, I should have made that two by eight, but I don't have two by eight. If I had a two by eight, I could put that up here and then fill like this with two by fours, but I don't have a two by eight. Over here, even. Fingers out of the way. Now I'm gonna measure in between here. 38 and an eighth. And I'm gonna measure down below to make sure it's the same because the stud could be bowed. So 38 and an eighth. Now you don't need this two by four here. I think it just makes it way easier 
to install the other blocks. Now you can put these blocks in and you can picture not having this to hold it, how you would have to hold it and shoot it the way I'm gonna shoot it. Be a little difficult. Shoot it on the bottom first. And then you can toenail it. Last block. Okay, I got my two by six, 38 and an eighth. And I cut this piece of 7 16 OSB. I ripped it to five and a quarter. The two by six is five and a half. And then that's what I want to do. Make a sandwich. And I just nail it together. Oh, nice two by six. Damn it. I just want to make sure that the plywood isn't going to stick out past the two by six. Make sure everything is nice and flush. even on one side, nail that side, this one up, aha, see that, it's a little bowed, Just put some pressure on it, and hammer it, Shoot it. Now before I go nailing this off completely, I'm going to put my jack studs in. So I go down to the bottom plate, measure up, 79 and a quarter. I want these to be tight, 79 and a half strong. Well, the camera shut off on me, but I got my jack studs in. Nailed them into place and then nailed into the header from there. I'm going to put a couple more nails in this way, toenail. But I can take this right out of here. There's no more weight on that. So, there you go. That's why you put that screw in there. So I move my jack over to this side, supported right here. And I'm just gonna raise this up a little more. Here's some crunching and cracking. Do the same over here. Again, I put the screw up here in case one of these gets loose. There's really not a lot of weight on this. I thought there was gonna be, but. Got my jack posts out of there and I put in three temporary studs. I just did that because I had a short stud. I wanted to use it. Um, and when I go to figure out what I want to do with this closet here and continue this wall over, then I can support each of these joists and take those studs out and reframe this. But I'm good for now. So guess what? We can finally take that wall down.
So when you see me do this throughout the entire video and I go, yeah, there's not much weight on that, you can tell. You can wiggle it, and if it, it wiggles free, typically there's not a ton of weight on it. If it's solid, then you probably have some weight on it, so you just gotta be careful. I'm gonna take this down piece by piece. I don't like doing the whole sledgehammer and cutting things in half and letting it go. I like to do things nice and easy. And take your time and make sure you don't mess anything up. I start with this one. There's a nice big gap here, so that's, that's easy to get a sawzall blade in there and just cut those nails. Watch your eyes, you should wear safety glasses. Pull that one out. Bend the nails out of the bottom. Whoa, that's why you gotta be careful. Sweet. Now I can cut this out as a little tip if you wanted to. Before you do the jacks, you can set the depth of your circular saw to inch and a half. And this right here to the blade is actually an inch and a half. So you can run it along your stud and cut each side out. Might be easier for you, but you can do it either way. I'm gonna use a Sawzall. go. You know, I thought I was really going to take a little bit of this dip out of the floor, but these <laughs> did not move at all. So the good news is I didn't crack a tile, but the bad news is there's still a dip here. I might have to sister this up after all, but that is to be determined. Here is the end result. That wall is gone. I got my wall started for the third bedroom, turning my house from a two bedroom into a three bedroom. I tuck some insulation in there for now while I jump around and do this work. Looking good. I'm happy with it. Now I gotta get rid of this thing. Stink pipe, but that is for another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I may have rambled a little bit, but I try and give you as much knowledge as I possibly can. And not everything's gonna be perfect in an old fixer upper house. And I don't know everything. So let me know how you think I did in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe for more videos like this, including taking out that cast iron stack, building that closet, finishing this room, doing my kitchen. I got a ton of stuff planned. You can check out more videos here-ish and here-ish. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Where do you guys keep your art? I keep mine in the wall. Gorgeous.